But part two, we're reading the Willie Lynch letter and the making of a slave. Now, the Willie Lynch letter. This is what he did. This is the letter that Willie Lynch wrote to all the slave makers. Who's that? Those are slaves. Wow. Why? The why Willie they, Lynch letter. Why are the kids slaves? Um, the reason that your Caucasians are so violent is because they are filled with animal DNA. According to science, about 80 to 85 percent of Caucasians have RH positive blood. Now, you may say, what is this RH positive blood in there? Well, it is the reuses monkey. This is why some Caucasians are born with a little tail. And they're very hairy. Okay? Not at birth, but they, they develop a bunch of hair on, on their body. This is the RH factor. This is science. This is strictly educational. Okay? So, when a Caucasian woman is about to give birth, the doctor will give her this Rogam shot. What this Rogam shot does is it tells the immune system, hey, it's okay to have this baby. Otherwise, the immune system will see it as a foreign entity and it will destroy the child. Thus, a miscarriage will take place. So the RH, or the, or the, the, the Rogam shot, excuse me, suppresses the immune system and allows the baby to be born. This is the point of the Rogam shot. This is known throughout Caucasian history of them having to take a Rogam shot. So that makes them act like an animal, which is why ever since they landed on our planet, they've been acting like wild ass animals, killing shit, taking, killing our plants, killing the animals, eating them, killing the whole land. Just kill, 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 kill. That's all the fuck human beings did since they landed on our planet. Facts. But the reason they are doing that is because they are filled with animal DNA. So it makes sense. And this is where the term mammal come from. When they say we are mammals, no, we are not no fucking mammals. Mammal means man, animal. And they, human beings, are mammals because they are filled with animal DNA. Why? The why, are they, why are the kids slaves? And why do you, after everywhere you go, you gotta kill and murder the rest of the people of the human family? Your history is written in the blood of the black, the brown, the yellow, and the red. Why are you so insecure? Do you know what brings about insecurity? What brings about insecurity is when you have a false concept of yourself. Mm -hmm. And the false concept of self is white supremacy. They believe that they are better because they are white. And as a result, see, when a man has that kind of silly mentality, oh, hey, Hitler had the silly mentality that the white man, the Aryan, is superior. So then at the Olympics, Jesse Owens kicks up all the Aryans. Mm. Hitler is outraged. He's angry. That's very simplistic. Yeah. Well, you need it to be simplistic. You need it to be extra simplistic. The reality, I know, they can't, they can't handle, they, you know, look, when you, when you take a brick, when you take a brick, and you hurl the brick among a pack of dogs, only the dog who gets hit yelps. Think about it. You hear a lot of barking, 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 barking. A dog just got hit by a brick. No teeth, it's very simplistic because it's not complicated. The white man pushing white supremacy. That's why they would cut off our penis when they would lynch us. Penis envy. They're afraid of the black man because of our potency, because of our manliness. Because when you look at the black man, he's a real man. He's strong. So then they would have us as mandingos fighting one another. That's why even today, they want to be the heavyweight champion of the world. They can't find a white man to do it. So they tried to turn a black man, Frank Bruno, into a white man. <laughs> they, called him the, they called him the great white hope. They, they're desperate. They, 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 they deny us. I want you to, I'm talking about the insecurities. We're not allowed to play golf. Why are we not allowed to play golf? Because we are inferior. We can't play the game. But let one black man into golf. Then all of a sudden there's a tiger in the woods. And he, he doesn't just play golf. He becomes the master. 
We're not allowed to play tennis. Let black people into tennis. We go straight to Wimbledon and win it in 1935. A black woman. Now, Venus and Serena, they run out of opponents. They have to play each other. The white people cannot compete on an even playing field. They let us into athletics. You can't run like us. You let us into any field of endeavor, we dominate it. So they feel, see they push supremacy because there is an inert inferiority. Go ahead, bro. And so when somebody is inferior, they have to give the impression of being superior. Hence all the weapons, hence all the artillery, hence all the media and the, 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 the propaganda and the program of brainwashing the entire world into believing in their way of life as opposed to any other way of life. And they become very afraid of anything that goes contrary. And so every time a black man stands up for black people, Martin Luther King, shot down. Malcolm X, shot down. Patrice Lumumba. Because the, the Caucasians were, were what you consider two-legged beasts. Anyway, so we're going to read the letter, right? He wrote this list, gentlemen. I regret, gentlemen, I greet you here on the bank of the Jamestown, of the James River. What's the James River? August 20, 1619, Jamestown, Virginia. A ship docks with a cargo that would alter the course of history. For the very first time, enslaved Africans, captured and torn from their homes, arrive in North America. This isn't just a shipment of goods, it's a dark precedent. From this point, a system of bondage and discrimination grows, shaping the economic and social fabric of the soon-to-be United States. For centuries, millions suffer, cultures merge and resist, and a legacy of inequality is birthed. The weight of August 20, 1619 still lingers. What can we learn from this day? That's, that was in Virginia, Jamestown River in Virginia, okay? In the year of our Lord, 1712, listen to that, he talking about, he talking about his Lord. Meanwhile, they're enslaving the original people of the planet. First, I shall thank you, the gentlemen of the colony of Virginia, for bringing me here. I am here to help you solve some of your problems with slaves. Your invitation reached me on my modest plantation in the West Indies. Here I have experimented with some of the newest and still the oldest methods for control of slaves. Ancient Rome would envy us if my program is implemented. Again, see him? They got him in bondage. Even got the babies. Ooh. See, look at that little baby right there. Wow, that's just disrespectful. That's more than disrespectful. Okay, <laughs> then it goes on. As our boat sails south on the James River, named for our illust illustrious king, whose version of the Bible we cherish. So he's talking about King James, because of course we know King James put his name on the Bible. He, he, really, didn't, he really didn't translate nothing. But, he just put his name on. but anyway, I saw enough to know that your problem is not unique. While Rome used cords of wood as crosses for standing human bodies, along with this old highway in great numbers, you here are using a tree in the rope on occasion. See, he's talking about how they were hanging the so-called black people from trees. Okay? Mm -hmm. Then he says, uh, <clears throat> I caught the whiff of a dead slave hanging from a tree a couple miles back. You are not only losing valuable stock by hangings, you are having uprising. Slaves are running away. Your crops are sometimes left in the fields too long for maximum profit. You suffer occasional fires. Your animals are killed. Gentlemen, you know what your problems are? I do not need to elaborate. I am not here to enumerate your problems. I am here to introduce you to a method of solving them. In my bag here, I have a foolproof method 
for controlling your black slaves. I guarantee every one of you that if installed correctly, it will control the slaves for at least 300 years. My method is simple. Any member of your family or your overseer can use it. Okay, here we got, he got the slaves right here in the little slave house. Got chains around their neck and stuff. Now listen to this. Got them in bondage. It's just showing it. Now, we'll kill you, don't lose no sleep. Mm -hmm. The Caucasian is killing us and don't lose no sleep because they are physically composed of the same melanin phenotype of animals. They do not have the neuromelanin, which is um, manifested within the neuromelanin nerve tract of the brain that allows you to connect to what you call God, the creator, whatever you identify with God as. With that being said, when we keep talking about love everybody and you can love who you want to love, yeah, you can. If you want fucking hemolytic disease, if you want red blood cell hemolysis, and so we keep creating hybrid entities and hybrid entities and hybrid entities and hybrid entities. And we're not, we're not understanding why everybody on the planet can't function to a, to a regular capacity. We are not the same people. Black people are 100% human beings. All non-black people are primitive and, and ape. They share 98% of their DNA with ape. And so we are two different species. This is like you got to, black people, we're more reptile based. Okay? This is why we got webs in between our, between our fingers. When we get ashy, we got scaly hands. This is why we're so agile. Because we have reptile DNA. All Caucasians and, and Asians and, and, and the alike, all the other phenotypes, have primate and dog DNA. This is why they're more brute. This is why they're more beastie. You see white boys motherfucking banging their motherfucking head on shit. You don't see them niggas doing that. Because that shit gorillas do. That shit monkeys do. Okay? You see black people being agile. We jumping over shit. We playing foot. That shit reptiles do. So you got a group of reptiles trying to fucking live with a group of fucking monkeys. And then you telling them that they the same and you wonder why it's so much race shit going on. Because it's supposed to be because you lying to people about their genetic origins. And so I'm going to give it to you wrong, whether you want to believe it or not. Black people are descendants from extraterrestrials. There you fucking go. And all non-black people are genetically hybrid organisms created by experiments that took place about 6,000 years ago. He goes on to say I have outlined a number of differences among the slaves, and I take these differences and make them bigger. I use fear, distrust, and envy for control purposes. These methods have worked on my modest plantation in the West Indies, and it will work throughout the South. So he's telling these slave makers how to control their slaves without killing them because to them, the slaves were like, merchandise like stock okay take this simple little list of differences and think about them on top of my list is age but it is there only because it starts with a a with an a and second is color or shade there is an intelligent size sex status on plantation attitude of owners whether the slave lives live in a valley on a hill east, west, north, south, have fine hair, coarse hair, or is tall or short. Now that you have a list of differences, I shall give you an outline of action, but there, but before that, I shall ensure you that distrust is stronger than trust and envy is stronger than adulteration, respect or ad admiration. So he's trying to teach these other slave owners how to enforce distrust in the slaves. So they, so basically, they want to trust each other. Like basically, the so-called black people. Who taught you to hate the texture of your hair? Who taught you to hate the color of your skin to such extent that you bleach to get like the white man? Who taught you to hate the shape of your nose and the shape of your lips? Who taught you to hate yourself from the top of your head to the soles of your feet? Who taught you to hate your own kind? Who taught you to hate the race that you belong to? So much so that you don't want to be around each other. No, before you come asking Mr. Muhammad, does he teach hate? You should ask yourself, who taught you to hate being what God gave you? So that they only depend on them, only depend on the slave makers. So it can cause division between them. That way they can tell on each other and sell each other out. Why okay. Do they tell on each other? Because this 
Th this is the point of his letter. So that he can cause confusion amongst Wait, them. who's writing this? Uh, old raggedy slave maker. Now listen to this. Don't forget you must pitch the old black male versus the young black male. And the young black male against the old black male. You must use the dark-skinned slaves versus the light-skinned slaves. <clears throat> okay. So he put then and then it say you must also have you must also have your white servants and overseers distrust all blacks. But it is necessary that your slaves trust and depend on you. They must love, respect, and trust only us. So he basically finna make all of them turn against each other and trust and only the enslavers, the colonizers. Gentlemen, these ki these kites, and gentlemen, these kits are your keys to control. Use them. Have your wives and children use them. Never miss an opportunity. If used intensively for one year, the slaves themselves will remain perpetually distrustful. Thank you, gentlemen. Ain't that some crazy? Woo! Now you see this picture right here. This is a, this is an image of a slave that was beat with a whip, and his back is all messed up because he was beat with a whip plenty times. Okay, this is proof that slavery actually existed. Some people say slavery didn't exist. Oh yes, it did. Okay. Now this here, he said, "Let us make a slave." 